Well, amen. Good evening. How are you? Praise God. We should be doing really, really well. Amen. It is always a joy, a privilege for us to, to sing and to think about uh, when he returns, our long-awaited king. And when we see him, we, we will be like him. We've been journeying through that on Wednesday nights, thinking about heaven. We've, we've been taking like a bit-by-bit bit theological, uh, pull it apart and examine uh, heaven, but always remember uh, the great truths. Before we get into the details, right? And that is that there's coming a day very soon that King Jesus will return and we will see him, we will behold him and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord to the glory of, of God the Father. Let me quickly remind you that next week is spring break and so we will not have Wednesday evening activities, okay? Um, but then we, we will pick up the week after that. We will be right back here. And in fact, the week that we return, we'll still have recharge. We'll, st we'll, we'll have dinner and recharge. Uh, but then Chad is actually going to uh, uh, lead us through a, a, uh, a gospel witnessing uh, training for, um, for the boxes that we're handing out on the other side of spring break as we, in our witness campaign, as we're moving towards Easter. So just circle that on your calendar. It's gonna be really important in two Wednesdays uh, to be here for that. Okay, um, a fun topic tonight, uh, one that uh, you probably get a wide range of emotions on. Some people care deeply about this topic and others not so much. Let's talk for a moment about Will there be animals in heaven? And I will close with the question that does get asked to me as a pastor often, and that is, what about my pets? Okay? I'm going to save that for the very end just so you pay attention the whole way. And then we will find out if Fluffy's going to be there, okay? Will there be animals in heaven? Let me quickly read for you Isaiah 11, 6 through 9. It says, uh, Then the leopard will lie down with the goat and the calf and the lion with the uh, yearling together, and a little child will lead them. And the cow will feed with the bear, and, and the young will lie down, and the lion will eat straw like ox, the infant will play near the hole of the cobra and the young child will put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy or be destroyed on my holy mountain for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as water covers the sea. What will it be like for animals to be made new as well? So before the fall, um, what's, what's, what seems clear is in Eden is, is that we were instructed to eat the, the plants. And, and it's only after the fall that animals become food or that animals devour one another. If animals were in the original creation, there is no reason that they wouldn't be in the new heaven and new earth. In fact, as, as you see in Romans 8, with all of creation groaning and longing for the redemption, for the resurrection, for all things to be made new, certainly that also includes animals, right? We, we would say the entire cosmos, from natural disasters and and. We unpacked that a, a few times ago, talking about the entire universe, um, but certainly that includes animals. What about this question? Do animals have souls? Tread lightly here, pastor. <laughs> this was new to me. 
Because if you had asked me before tonight, I would simply tell you, listen, animals don't have souls. They're different. So yes, they are different from humans, but think about it like this. Like humans, God takes the ground and There's actually a number of passages that say that animals have the breath of life in them. The same words that are used that we take to mean that we have a soul. Okay? Genesis 1.30, Genesis 2.7, 6.17, 7.15, and 22. All say the breath of life is in animals. Now, let's be abundantly clear, so you do not call me a heretic, Animals are not humans. They do not have a human soul. They have not been made in the image of God. That's very distinct, very unique, something that is given to humankind, and and humans are given to rule over the animals. But the plants are never said to have the breath of life in them, okay? It, in fact, as uh, Randy Alcorn argues here, that that throughout all of church history, the classic understanding has been that animals, as well as humans, have souls. It's just very important to to keep those two things distinct. As as we work through our day in culture, when when particular organizations would would try and elevate animals to to, uh, equality or uh, those sorts of things, The Bible doesn't go there. It keeps the distinction, but at the same time, uh, it would pertain that animals have souls. Well, isn't it a modern development that animals are are thought so highly of? This this whole idea of, of... loving animals and treating them like pets. Isn't that much more of a modern development? Well, well, yes and no. Uh, it, it is important to understand uh, culturally, like, like when you read the Bible, uh, dogs were, were not particularly uh, uh, considered pets or clean animals that you would keep in the house. But I do want to point out a couple aspects of Scripture that would argue contrary, that would tell you The love and affection for animals as pets is biblical. Do you remember when David comes, or when Nathan comes and confronts King David and he he tells him this story about the shepherd who had a a wee little lamb and, and that other evil guy came and took his lamb and slaughtered it and served it? Well, the thing that makes that story so catching and endearing and makes David so mad is the affection of a pet owner, if you will. Furthermore, there are repeated stories of uh, parables like where a shepherd has lost his sheep, his one sheep, and he goes and finds it. And how does he respond when he finds that one sheep? He picks it, carries it over his shoulders. Why? Because Because there's affection there. Why is it that the shepherd knows each sheep by name? Why is he bothered to name them? And why does he know them? And why does he know their... All of that is intrinsic in being a good shepherd. And the the imagery that you and I draw out of that is that he is a good shepherd to us. And so if he knows our name... But it starts with that affection that is given to animals and sheep. Psalm 148 actually commands all of creation to praise God, and that includes animals. Listen, wild animals and the cattle and small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes, and it goes on to name them, but it begins with the animals, and it it commands, praise the Lord. So if you ask the question, did, did Christ die for animals? We would be very clear to say, well, in one sense, no, not at all. Uh, because, Because Christ 
is made in the image of God. In fact, the blood of bulls and goats cannot wipe away the sins of man. And so, so Christ incarnate, he died for the sins of man so that we might be redeemed. So in, in one sense, we'd be very clear, Christ did not die for animals. But, but in the other sense, we would turn back around and say, well, well, yes, he did. If in that you mean all of creation, the same way that Christ died for the redemption of all of creation, and the same way that that, that hinges upon mankind, and God making all things new through Christ and, and for that redemption, that Romans 8 would declare that if all of creation is groaning and longing and waiting for the redemption, why does that not also include animals? Will extinct animals live on the earth, on the new earth? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe dinosaurs will come back. All right, Pastor, you're running out of time. Just get to the part where you at, tell me about my pet. <laughs> Let me be straightforward. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if, if Fluffy or, or Fido or Boxer is going to be there. Let me tell you this, it, it, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they were. I, I do think all animals are gonna be there. And if, so, so there's a parallel with, with, with Noah's flood that the whole earth was destroyed with, by water and in the end, the whole earth is going to be destroyed by, by fire. But God preserved and protected animals so that they would carry over. So you have to ask the question, if at the end everything is destroyed by fire, um, how are the animals going to be remade? we got a couple options. God could make them entirely new, just create new animals. All right, we got animals in eternity. Or at the same time, God could bring back animals from the past. Some of you, this is what you're going to hold on to. All right, he said it. <laughs> or he could have a mixture of both. I don't know. But it wouldn't surprise me. And there have been a number of theologians who have waded in this area and said the exact same answer. It wouldn't really surprise me. And here's why. Who made these enduring qualities in animals? God did. Who made us to be touched by them? God did. Do we love animals because of sin and the curse? No. We love animals because God created us and them and a love for each other. And as with all things, you know, we can turn people into idols and we can turn animals into idols and we can put them in wrong spots or whatnot, but it is incredibly important to pause and to think about the beauty of God's creation and, and to see and to realize, you know what, he, he made animals because they display in some form or another characteristics of him and who he is. And so the same way that we are commanded that all of creation displays the, the power and the majesty and the might and the beauty of God, his intrinsic powers, so too we should think that way of animals. Will you pray with me? Our Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for time for us to, to think and continue to chew on, on the beauty and the magnificence and what it is going to be like to be with you and to know you and to be known by you and, and to think about the new creation when all things are made right again. Um, and to think in a particular area about how that includes animals and, and other creation that you um, that you have caused us to interact with. And so to play in this space, God, we, we thank you for it. God, uh, please refine our thoughts and, and teach us and, and help us to have a passion and a heartbeat that longs to be with you. We pray that in Jesus' name, amen.